the next in the long line of wonderful Walther products. Uh, known famously, obviously, for the PPK. Uh, that's the James Bond pistol for everybody that knows a little bit about guns, people who know nothing about guns. Uh, the PPK, uh, the PPS, which is a very popular uh, carry pistol right now. In fact, I just sold one not too long ago to uh, one of the guys that I shoot with to actually work out with him. And he loves it, single stack, got some nice weight and form factor to it. Um, then uh, the P99 was kind of the precursor to the Walther PPQ. And there's people, a lot of people out there that are saying, hey, this is a lot like the P99. And I have to say, no, not so much. Does it look like a P99? Yeah, it does share a lot of the same uh, form factor, but it is a completely new, totally different pistol uh, from Walther. And they've really gotten this right. This was introduced at SHOT Show 2011. It's available in both 9mm and 40 Smith & Wesson right now. And probably the biggest thing you'll notice on this particular pistol um, is the trigger. And you hear a lot of people talking about what a fantastic trigger it is, and indeed it is. Um, this is actually my son, uh, Newser Dude's pistol. This was his graduation present from uh, Gustavus University. He's on his way to law school. Um, that's on him, by the way. I don't have that kind of money. But uh, he was looking for a truly ambidextrous pistol, and this one is. And what I mean by truly ambidextrous is it does have a slide lock slash release. Safety check time. Drop the mag out, nothing there. Nothing inside the uh, chamber, we're good. Um, it's got the slide lock and release on both sides. Also extended, so it's very easy to get to. Um, and then it also has, <coughs> excuse me, the traditional Walther mag release, which is this switch right here. And the reason I call this truly ambidextrous is Say comparing it to the uh, M&P series by Smith & Wesson, it's ambidextrous, it's got a slide lock or a release on either side, but you have to switch the button on the uh, magazine release in order to get it to be a left-handed pistol versus a right. With this type of design, obviously you can have a right-hander come up and grab it right away and start shooting, or you can have a left-hander come up right away and start shooting it because um, you can release the mag from either side. You can either use your finger, your trigger finger to release it, or you can use your thumb. Now the problem for me with my thumb is I have to change my grip to drop it with my thumb. And if you were in a combat situation, you don't want to have to be doing that. If you're competing, you don't want to have to be doing that. Um, so it is a different, you know, a different magazine release. Some people love it, some people hate it. Um, I think it's, it's perfectly good. It's, uh, it works fine for me. We've got a P22, it works the same way. Once you get used to it, it's just not a big deal. And actually I use my middle finger uh, to pop that out rather than my trigger finger. This is truly a single action striker fired pistol. And what I mean by that is a lot of pistols out there uh, that are striker fires, they actually are technically a double action. I consider them single actions because they have a single action type pull. It's a real nice, crisp, light pull typically. Uh, however, what it does is when you pull and it, when, it re, uh, when it cycles, it half cocks the trigger. And then when you do your next pull for your next round, it fully cocks it, and then releases the firing pin. This particular pistol has what they call a fully pre-cocked. So when you pull the trigger on this and it cycles, got the magazine in, when it cycles, it fully cocks, and all you're doing is just releasing the firing pin when you pull the trigger. So it's part of what really adds to uh, what is really a great, great trigger in this gun, is it's truly a single action striker fire. Um, I'm not aware of any other ones, to be honest with you. They're, they may be out there and nobody's hyped it, maybe it's just marketing, but I will say it does a lot to make this a, an amazing trigger. The other thing that's really nice about this trigger is the reset. <clears throat> I'm going to drop the mag, it just makes it easier. Um, so you'll see it's got a really good set point, okay? It's not mushy. It just, boom, right there, you can feel it, you know it's there. You give it that five and a half pound pull. The reset is only a tenth of an inch, and it's audible. You can hear that click, and then you can pull it again. So it's got a very, very short reset, and a really nice, crisp trigger pull, both in uh, the full mode as well as the reset mode. As far as an audible reset, I don't know. That, that strikes me as kind of odd. It's handy when you're at the range. It's handy when you are practicing uh, your dry firing. In a combat situation or a shooting situation, I don't know that you're going to have time um, or the uh, willingness to want to listen for a reset. 
To me, what's more important than the reset is can I feel it? Can I feel that trigger reset before I pull again? And on this pistol, you absolutely can. So um, you hear a lot of good things about the trigger on this. In my opinion, they're all true. It is really, really good trigger. Uh, my son, Newser Dude, again, this is his pistol. Um, just crazy about it, loves it, um, has really had a lot of fun uh, working between the full pull and the reset um, on his uh, target practice. So it is something you have to get used to if you're not used to doing a full, or if you're not used to doing a reset on your trigger pull. And some people don't. There are people out there that will do a full pull, a full release, and then another full pull, okay? Um, very common. Uh, it, in fact, it's probably more uncommon that people actually use the reset. Uh, it's harder to get used to. It's harder to be accurate with when you're learning it. Once you do, you're much more accurate with the reset and you're also faster because you're not letting the trigger travel its full length anymore. So let's talk about you know the form factor, the uh, quote unquote ergonomics, which is everybody likes to use that term these days. But basically it's how does the gun feel in your hand uh, and what's it like to uh, manipulate. Um, I really like the way this gun feels. It's got probably one of the most molded grips um, I have seen, and I don't know if you can get a good angle on that or not. Um, my brother here is our ace camera person and does a very nice job. He doesn't get enough kudos in these videos, by the way, so I want to pass that along to uh, Huguenot because he does a great job for me here. And, uh, you know, the prices I'm paying him, boy, what you guys are seeing on, on tape here is I'm getting my money's worth. It's worth every penny I'm spending. Right, Huguenot? Yeah, big thumbs up. Anyway, um, you know, it's again with what they've been able to do with polymers and uh, the manipulation they can do, this has got a very, you know, what I'll call curvy. Um, not only does it have your finger grooves in front, but it travels around to the sides of the grip as well, so your fingers have something to follow all the way through. Um, you know, I hesitate to call that stippling, but that's probably what it is, but it's got really good stippling front on the back straps. That is an interchangeable back strap, by the way comes with a, a large and a small, but it does fit my hand really, really well. Um, you know, the thumb drops right here, uh, thumb memory, it's, uh, it's comfortable, very, very comfortable for me. The extended slide lock, uh, again, my thumb snaps right to it, works really, really well. Um, it is a 25 and a half ounce pistol. That's fairly light, even though it's, you know, it's a polymer bottom, obviously. Um, that's pretty light for this, uh, for this uh, type of pistol. This comes right in there with the, the Glock G19. It's almost identical in size, uh, but it is lighter and you can feel it. You can feel it. It's a fairly light pistol and some people are actually using this as a concealed carry. I still think it's a little large for me, but I know people that carry G19s as well. Um, so if you carry G19, you'd carry this without any problem. For me, it's more of a service pistol as opposed to a carry pistol, or I should say a concealed carry pistol. Um, it's more of a service pistol type thing for me. Sights, adjustable three dots. The front is pinned, but the rear is adjustable both for windage and elevation. So that's nice. Uh, you, can, you can sight this gun in uh, very, very well. It has an external extractor. And that also serves as a chamber, loaded chamber indicator. Uh, it'll get a little red in there. I'm sure it's not going to come up on the, on the camera. There's a little red dot down in there that you can barely see. Uh, it's not even the camera's fault because when we're at the range, we can't see it either. Um, so for me, it's kind of useless as a loaded chamber indicator. Again, I think it's more of a marketing tool than anything else to be able to say that it has one. Again, striker fire, um, so it's got that, there's no additional safeties on it, uh, no manual safety. Um, there is a firing pin block, we'll take it down in a second here and show you that. Round capacity, it's got a 15 round mag, that's what comes standard with it. It does come with two, and there is also a plus two option that you can buy in magazines uh, directly from Walther, and I'm guessing that there's aftermarket ones as well. So you can get as many as 17 rounds plus one in the chamber uh, with this particular pistol. Let's take it down and see what it looks like. This is one of the really, really nice features of this pistol. And again, uh, my son, Newser Dude, loves it. Probably one of the simplest takedowns you'll ever see. All you do, again, we'll drop the magazine. We always do that. We safety check ahead of time. All you have to do is pull these two little levers down and off she comes. It doesn't get much easier than that. Um, they've actually kind of, and everybody's going to get mad at me now because I'm going to bring up Glock again. And if you've watched any of my videos, you know I'm not a Glock fanboy, but I, I do like Glock. Um, you know, they've taken those two little buttons that can be a little hard to get to, and they've replaced them with these nice, you know, this big lever right here on either side, just like the P22. 
The difference is, like I say, all you got to do is pull it. It can be cocked, it can be uncocked, doesn't matter, and it just slides right off. So very, very simple takedown. And then from there, obviously, we're just back to typical polymer framed takedown. The other thing it has is it's got a fully enclosed recoil spring assembly. So um, again, simpler and simpler, right? There's no having to take the spring off or the spring coming off independently. It's an entirely self-contained unit. So it just slides right out. There you go. Now it makes it a little more difficult to clean, uh, but not a big, big deal. Obviously easier to replace. Firing pin safety right here. Otherwise a very typical looking slide. In fact, uh, one of the things I do like about this slide is, you know, not a lot of nooks and crannies. This is very, very, very simple to clean because uh, everything's just laying right out there. Um, no crevices, no deep wells. You know, the Springfield XDM's got a couple deep wells in it. Um, this is very clean, very straightforward, very simple. And in my experience, you know, simpler the better, and the easier it is to clean, and the less there is to go wrong. So again, this is the 9mm. I think I mentioned that. They do use a tenifer coating, what they call a tenifer coating, on both the slide as well as the barrel. So that's their uh, way of doing corrosion resistance. Goes back together just the way it came apart. Very simple, very short um, spring recess. So you're not trying to fight a spring in there and get it all back. It just pops right in. And then just pops right back on and you're good to go. So very, very simple takedown. Um, absolutely a joy from that standpoint. Easy to clean, doesn't seem to dirty up all that much. I think most of the residue does fall out of it. Let's take this to the range. It is absolutely a joy to shoot and I'm looking forward to showing it to you. So back from the range, uh, I did forget to mention that it does have a Picatinny rail, um, so you can hang a light off there or a laser off of there, make it a tactical piece for you if you're doing home defense um, or you're doing any night shooting. Uh, the other thing I forgot to mention is it does have um, a really nice trigger guard here with a nice flat front, front that also has serrations on it. So if you like wrapping your finger there, now for me this one's a little long, but I used to shoot like this all the time. And finally, the people who trained me uh, beat me out of it and made me go back to a, a more or less a standard grip, I guess you'd call it. But if you like putting your finger up there, if that helps you from an accuracy standpoint, um, perfect trigger guard to do that with. So the really, really sweet shooting, totally ambidextrous. Again, another plug for my son there. Uh, PPQ. I think this is going to get more and more popular as people become more and more familiar with it. You can pick this up for between five and a quarter and say $580, $590. So it's right in there with Smith & Wesson and a little less than the Springfield, certainly less than the Sig Sauer's, but a great value. You get two magazines with it. Uh, you know, a lot of people are cutting down to one now and then leaving the price the same. So good value, great pistol. Hey, if you like what we do here, uh, my brother Huguenot and myself put a lot of work into these things, believe it or not, even though it doesn't necessarily look like it. A lot of work goes into making these videos, but we'd love to have you subscribe if anything that we're doing makes sense to you. Um, if it doesn't, you know, we'll see you later. Thanks a lot, but uh, you know, give us suggestions. We're happy to listen to you and happy to put in these uh, videos, whatever it is you think uh, would make sense for you to see. So again, thanks for stopping by. Uh, subscribe if you can, leave comments, look forward to them, and we'll see you next time. Crucible Arms.